you know, I, I look at our ne- what I call negative ego states, and there's a whole array, array of them. Anger, resentment, fear, envy, victimhood, et cetera. There's about 20 what I call negative ego states that plague people. Either they plague them interpersonally or they're inner aggressive. Anxiety, fear, shame, worthlessness, et cetera. So they attack the self. Uh, even the self-attacking ones are very disruptive of interpersonal relationships. So very early on, I really wanted to understand regulating the inner life. And I also learned early on without recourse to traditional talking psychotherapy. For some people, it works great to talk about your past. For other people, it locks in those neurological patterns. Hmm. So I've decided take on negative ego states as something to take on. In Jewish spiritual psychology, we call it the Yetzer Hara. Uh, destructive, um, like a destructive shape within you. So because of my interest in what we call shadow work, which means like the Jungian idea that everybody has a shadow, these shadows get manifested in these negative ego states. I teach a practice where you want to be aware of them, watch how they operate, and go after them. Hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a spiritual warrior kind of a thing. So I don't, I don't want to wait until a symptom hits and takes over a part of my day or, or uh, damages a relationship. I recommend going after them proactively with the higher self working on disruptive ego states. Can you give us an example? Well, let's say anger. Um, number one, I think a big part of angry people are it's genetic and personality. Some people just run hot. Other people run defensive. Let's say we're just going to take these two archetypes. Angry people are super sensitive to being let down, to being disappointed, um, to not having not being able to control others, control situations, trying to manage outcomes, dominate other people. And when that happens, they feel like at a primal level, a threat, and they need to take care of the threat. So one way is anger. And even without anger, there's, I call it the four C's, criticizing, complaining, condemning, insulting, labeling, blaming, accusing, and then escalating conflict. So when I first began counseling people, I thought, Whatever this thing is, you know, because it, it manifests in anger or criticizing, complaining, condemning, etc., it's not what the other person did because it's almost all disproportionate. And secondly, if it is about what they did, that's a guaranteed wrong way to change people. Unless you have overwhelming coercive power, most people don't transform under insult. In fact, what you oftentimes get is defiance and pushback. So let's say a person says, well, you wouldn't believe what my spouse said. You wouldn't believe what my teenager did. I said, I believe everything. I'm going to ask you, rationally speaking, is criticizing your spouse going to make them more likely to meet their, your needs? I will venture to guess that a criticized spouse will meet fewer of your needs than a spouse who's not criticized. So what do you do? Ah, it's not the spouse. It's the ego state. Right. There's a, there's a shadow force in there that wants to unleash on other people, okay? So you gotta fight the anger. What you don't do is, uh, sorry, is, um, well, my father, my mother, it might work with some people, but you have to proactively go to what I call the higher self, go down and work with the ego state. So what I found is disruptive ego states all have a, look, they begin as a feeling, but at some level, all feelings have thoughts, okay? So when I say, explain to me the thought behind criticism, assuming there is one. Well, I have to correct them. That's a rational thought. I have to correct them. It's not true, but at least it makes sense in the English language. They can't get away with this. There's always some thought there. I say, okay, well, let's examine those thoughts. Okay. Now, this is an interesting thing. You go to a higher self where we have the ability to observe, the ability to be objective about our inner lives, the ability to be rational, to aim at the truth. So everything in here is activated and brought to bear against the ego state of anger. And the ego state of anger just withers. It cannot stand this investigation. So let's say, okay, you're right. It will not make things better. Um, It's making everything worse. My anger makes everything worse. It makes me sick. It makes them sick. And and it's so destructive. I say, great. So there's no reason. So tell me why the anger gets out. They said, I don't know. But does that sound reasonable? People in the end will say, I don't know. You're right. It's thoughtless. It's destructive. I don't know. I said, now, you need to listen very carefully. Because you haven't decided. 
you haven't decided to stop being destructive. I said, I, I, said, I guarantee you this. They say, well, you wouldn't believe what they say. I said, I, was, I lived in San Diego for, for, for three months where these four guys insulted me every single day. And I never got mad once. About what? What were they insulting you? Uh, well, that I didn't hold my rifle correctly. That I didn't run fast oh, enough. Penalty. Okay. Yeah. These four guys, three months straight, beating me, insulting me, smacking me around. I never said, listen here, sir. <laughs> right? I need to. How dare you? How dare you? Right? <laughs> yeah. Never occurred to me. Yeah. So anger is not a response to what someone right. does. Right. It's a response to what you think you can do. Right. So they said, okay, how do I stop? So this is where I talk about the wall of virtue. You need to make a decision. It's a decision. Like when anger comes, it hits a wall. I'm saying no to my anger. And there are people that can say, you're 100% right. I'll train myself on my own time. This is what I call my, my wisdom practice. I will go down inside. I will discover my negative ego states. I will reason with them. I will discover what the righteous path is, what the honor, what the, what the honor code is. And whenever I have an urge to break the honor code, I will have a wall of virtue that says no. And first thing it does, it hits the wall of virtue. Doesn't matter what I feel, doesn't matter what I think, I have an honor code, okay? Then people say, well, isn't that repression? I said, it's called restraint. Now you have to work through the impulse to break your honor code. But I can have an honor code first. I'm not gonna say, well, I haven't thought it through, so I don't have to live by an honor code. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Go find another teacher. Because mm -hmm. if a person, I don't mind if people fail the honor code, but they have to commit to the honor code. Mm -hmm. So as a person commits the honor code, I say, I can help you because you're in a fight for what kind of person you want to be, an honorable person or a person who lacks restraint, lacks honor, lacks integrity. I mean, integrity meaning you live up to your values. So there's that, the wall of virtue, which means my disruptive ego states hit, hit a wall of virtue, a wall of honor. I've made an a priori commitment that it doesn't get expressed. It pops down into the place where I work it through. And over time, I disable the angry habit and you replace it with another habit. Empathy, thoughtfulness, listening, working through, which means you can't just diminish the power of one ego state you have to increase the power of a positive ego state. Now, I want to say to you guys, this does take time. Sure. It takes a lot of training. It's sure. like martial arts. Sure. You got to get on the mat every day, train, train, train. And Can then one young day, people do it? What's that? Can young people do it? Yeah, absolutely. They're the best. I mean, I was teaching this to my bar mitzvah kids. They were all over it. Because one of the things we were talking about that, you know, it's like that that Paul Simon song, like I, I look back on all the crap I learned in high school. Yeah. And, and you know, my kids are sitting upstairs like learning cursive. Yeah. You know, right, sorry. but but they learn nothing about like emotional management, about any of these things that, that far and away would have way more life benefit. Yeah. Have you ever thought about like, I mean, it feels like th this is something that like in a high school curriculum of some kind would be immensely valuable, okay. but there's Thank nothing you. like that out there. So I taught classes called Parenting the Soul of the Child, where I specifically teach parents not to raise their children for external outcomes. But parenting the soul of the child, what I say in this class is the greatest gift you can give your child is the gift of insight. Who am I? What's going on inside of me? And then the gift of virtue, how to manage what's going on inside of me and the gift of working through. So what I say to parents, make this part of your family culture. When your family sits down to dinner, when your family goes on vacation, whatever your family's going to talk about, talk about wisdom and virtue and inner life. Make it a fact. I'm going to get a workout in a little bit with my man Eric Linden, stunt coordinator from The Punisher. He's coming all the way up because we are about to get after it. And when that's done, he asks me in the car, are you going to have my shake ready? And I know what that means. Am I going to have my Sun Warrior shake? They've got the active protein, but they also have this collagen protein, which is amazing. They also have uh, the Warrior blend, which is a little bit lighter if you're trying to cut. And uh, I believe in it. I believe in that Sun Warrior stuff. Go to www.sunwarrior.com dot com slash real ones for 15% off. I appreciate y'all.